Hello there, this is Dave Allen for Mac Questions, and today I want to have a look at an application called Intensify Pro. I'm going to use it as a plugin from Aperture. So I've got a photograph here and I'd like to do something with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that and go to Edit with Plugin and go to Intensify Pro. It makes a copy of this, it means that you don't have to worry about destroying the original one. And once you've got this up, you can basically start doing some stuff with it. And there's a lot of things you can do. First start off, we've got all these presets. Now with these presets you can maybe go for a black and white one. Just tap on that preset there and it will change to black and white. And it looks quite dramatic. And you can easily change that to another type of black and white photograph. So lots of different things you can do there. Or you go for artistic. It's a colour one and it's giving us another view. Makes it awful grand in the sky there. So you have to kind of choose these various different ways of looking at your photograph and be choosy with it as well. If I press this button here, we can see what the picture was like before I made any changes. And if I press this button here, then we can have the two pictures side by side. Or I can have them one above the other, so I've got a before and an after. Quite handy. So what else have we got here? We can go for something that looks a bit more like a HDR. And in case you're worrying that it's going to do is to ruin your photographs by just making it look like rubbish, is that there are a few things on here where you can just go for something a little bit more subtle. We've got a quick image fix. It makes the sky look a bit brighter and it gives the uh, whole picture a little bit more of a punch. Or we've got architectural details. So some of these are more specific to different types of photographs. We haven't got much in the way of architecture here apart from these buildings in here. But as you see, it just generally sharpens things up in this area here compared to what it looks like in this area over here. But also what you can do is we've got this dramatic one here. We can press this down arrow. And we can change the amount of the effect as well. So on this one here, we can drop it down to 54%, cut down the amount of effect, or we can put it back up to 100 again and do it like that. Or what we can do is we can go to this button here and we get into this one here. We've got all the adjustments available to us. So what I can do here is if I want to, is I can just go and change the exposure. So that made it a little bit brighter there. Let's bring that back down again. Sometimes it takes a little while for these effects to actually be applied, but still. Or we can Please do subscribe here on YouTube and don't forget you can get me on Google Plus under the name David Allen with gold. Or we can look at the vibrance or the saturation. With the saturation here, if I wind that over to there, that's going to make it into a black and white photograph. Maybe we think that the sea is good on here, but the sky is just too much. And maybe we want to keep this bit at the bottom here, but do something about the bit at the top. Well, we can do that. And we can do that in a couple of different ways. One would be to get the erase mask, and I'm going to just start erasing away the effect that has been applied to the top there. So that's uh, one way of doing this. And it's not bad at all really, is it? It's quite good. I can just sort of paint that mask on there and it's going to mask away all of the effects that was applied to the sky. Just as you can take away from the effects that have been applied. And also what we can do is we can actually show the mask. So let's have a look at the mask. So the red part is where the effect is going and the other part isn't. If we want to go back into this and paint some of that mask back in there again, so we go back to the draw mode. And what we can do is we can make the brush a little bit smaller. I'm using the left square bracket at the moment to bring this down. And I can go really quite small with this here and really sort of get in there and get a quite a sharp edge on our mask as well. What I can do too, if I need to get in a bit closer to do this so I can see it a bit better, is I can use that and zoom and zoom in there. And what we can do even, we can invert this as well. So let's invert that. As you can see now, it's the sky that's going to get the effect and the bit of the bottom that isn't. This hand here means that I can move it around as well. So if I need to go and look at in specific areas and do some work. Another thing that you can do is you can put on a gradient mask. So we use the gradient tool now. And we control this by using this here. So I'm bringing this down and you can see where the mask is going to be. You can make the softness of the mask different by changing this here. Look, but when I first started doing this, I thought it was a bit difficult to see what was actually happening and where the mask was going. So the thing to do is actually to show the mask so you can see it a bit better. So now we can see that the red part there is where the effect is going to go and the bit at the bottom is where it isn't going to go. And I can change that so that I can move that and put it up the top there so there's less of it getting the effect. And also what I can do is I can turn this around so I can have it so that it goes across the picture that way. Or I can do a complete turn around 
and put it horizontal this way. So the gradient angle now is at 360. So we can change the exact angles to have it exact there if we want to. And I can do it with the slider as well. Oh, lovely. Look at that. So that's at 360 now. So let's move this down here. So have the effect so that it just goes on the bottom part of it there, not show the mask. And as you can see, we've got a nice little picture there now, aren't we? Apply the effect there with the gradient. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you with and without. So that's before and that's after. And as you can see, we've got a lot of nice sharpness in this sea area and we've got the smoothness of the sky. It's quite good. So when we're all happy with that, all we've got to do is click on apply and this will take us back into our Aperture application. So here we are back in Aperture. Now I can do a comparison of these two as well. If I want to in Aperture, select the two of them. And the one on the left is the one that had some work done on it in Intensify Pro. And I'll say that picture, I think it looks a little bit better for having that done to it. So there you go, that's a quick start into using Intensify Pro as a plugin from Aperture. And in another video, we'll have a look at see what else we can do with some of the settings that you can use within Intensify Pro. Bye bye now, talk to you again soon.